Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Tesla is testing out anti-theft solutions at Tesla superchargers to combat cable theft. Cable theft is a widespread issue. Thieves are going to charging stations, they're going to the dispensers, cutting off the cables. They are stripping the cables of the copper inside to then sell it for money. This is a huge issue, not only for electric vehicle owners who are looking to charge, but are now dealing with an out of order station, but for charge point operators who now have to get new cables, have them installed and deal with the loss of revenue of an out of order station. It affects everyone from the owner to the operator. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out of spec viewers. More information in the link in this episode's description. Now we talked about on this channel, ChargePoint implementing their own anti-theft measures with an anti-theft anti-cutting cable, as well as anti-theft software. And I talked about how it would be awesome to see other CPOs join ChargePoint in this innovation. Now, Tesla is doing the exact same thing with pressurized dye. Yes, exactly what that is. If you were to cut this cable, which has a pressurized line, it's going to explode dye into your face. And now if there is dye everywhere on your hands, on your clothes, it indicates that you likely just did something. This is evidence on your hands. It makes it easier for police to catch and identify thieves and perpetrators. Let me show you, before we talk about what these stations look like, let me show you what Die Defender looks like. And so here, this is Die Defender, the exploding dialogue. This was actually uh, originally intended for catalytic converters. Catalytic converter theft was, has is a common issue. Um, during the pandemic, it was widespread. And so what was happening, or people were cutting off the catalytic converters of internal combustion engine vehicles. Die Defender came out. This is something you attach to the catalytic converter. If they were to cut it, didn't notice the line. Boom, blue dye goes everywhere. Now it's on their hands. And it also... For people that know what Die Defender is, it makes sure that they're less likely to cut your catalytic converter. Same principle applies here. You're less likely to cut a Tesla supercharging cable if you know that when you cut it, it's gonna explode blue dye everywhere and you're more likely to be caught. There's also a wire mesh that goes around the cable, but which we'll show that in a second. So this is Die Defender saying that pressurized blue dye gives thieves a colorful surprise. And you'll see on screen here, right? Boom, this person cuts this line and blue dye explodes. It's pressurized. It explodes everywhere in this person's face. And now they have blue dye all over them. I think, think about what happens to perpetrators who are cutting these cable lines. They have blue dye on them. It's gotta be an uncomfortable experience looking like a Smurf. Now, here we see on the line, right? Warning, pressurized, do not cut dye defender. This is a V4 dispenser. Uh, of course, this doesn't have V4 cabinets, which we've talked about in other episodes, but a V4 dispenser, also internally known as the version 3.5 by Tesla. And we can see this cable here, right? It has a uh, anti-cut mesh that goes around the cable, which makes it harder for people to come in with angle grinders and cutters and cut the cable due to this mesh. And then underneath that mesh, right, which is hiding the this, this wire, is a pressurized line, which would explode blue dye in your face. And functionally, this really shouldn't change the effectiveness and use for a Tesla supercharger, right? Really all you're handling is the handle of the charger, plugging it into the charge port, and maybe the very lower end um, connects the cable to the charge port handle itself. So you're really not having to deal with all of the mesh that goes on here around the cable. And so effectual, effectively, effectually, effectually, effectively, Essentially, this doesn't affect. So essentially, this doesn't affect the functionality for Tesla supercharger users. Really, just creates an inconvenience and prevents thefts. 
Now, straight from Max, who is the head of Tesla's supercharging, he says, this is just a trial. We're always exploring options. Supercharger cables will also have property of Tesla engraved from our Buffalo, New York factory. That's where Tesla makes Tesla superchargers. So recycling companies shouldn't accept them and notify us. It's a scalable cost-effective solution that shouldn't impact service operations and customer experience. Now, imagine you go to a recycling company, a scrapyard with blue hands, blue all over you and copper that says property of Tesla Motors. This gives the recycler and the scrapyard the opportunity to report these thieves, right, to police. Also report back to Tesla saying, hey, someone has stolen your cables. And so property of Tesla motor or motors engraved on the cables, scalable cost effective solution. And as he says, right here with these pressurized uh, die cables, this is just a trial. So it's unlikely we're gonna see this widespread at Tesla superchargers anytime soon, but it's a solution that Tesla is checking out. And you can see in this image here, right? You can see, it looks like there's the pressurized system, the cable's kind of bulging, the connector's bulging out of the dispenser. And there's likely the pressurized system right behind it. And you know, this isn't something like where ChargePoint come, is coming out with new entire cables. Instead, this seems like a solution that is a little bit easier for Tesla to implement. There's, they already have these pressurized lines. They hide everything within the dispenser. They attach the mesh on side of the cable. They don't have to replace the cables at Tesla superchargers with every new cable. Now on the flip side, it's gonna be interesting. Maybe Tesla will implement a software like how we see with ChargePoint, which has their own anti-theft software where if they detect that the, the station or the cable is being tampered with, it will alert the owner of the station, charge point and flash lights as well as have on screen saying police have been, um, well, someone has been notified and that gives people the opportunity to contact police about what's taking place. And so this is the era of combating cable theft. Um, Kyle Connor, who runs out of spec, he went on a, a journey around Colorado, checking out all of the D different DC fast chargers in Colorado. And he experienced multiple DC fast chargers with cut cables, which is an inconvenience. Sometimes on apps, it's not gonna show that the cable's out of, the station's out of order. So you're going to the station expecting it to be working and it's not. But Tesla, ChargePoint, first two kind of pioneering uh, innovations and anti-theft solutions what do you guys think? What solutions do you think you would implement to kind of combat theft? What would be your anti-theft solution? Last episode, someone was talking um, about just like electrocuting the person. As soon as they cut it, they're electrocuted. That's a huge liability, guys, right? You're gonna hurt someone. Um, which hurting thieves, right? You don't want someone stealing the cable, so I totally get it. But what are some solutions you think would prevent cable theft? Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Out of Spec Podcast. My name is Isaiah, and I will see you guys in the next one.